Hello and welcome to all of our viewers from around the world. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Director of Communications and MC here at Gold Learning. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm so excited to introduce to you my next guest, Renee Cam. I've just had the privilege of listening to her presentation and boy, um, it is just outstanding how much information there is, Renee. And I know we're gonna get into the topic in just a moment, but please introduce yourself, tell folks where you are in the world and a little bit about what you do. Oh, thanks, Fiona. So I'm here with you guys from Melbourne, Australia. That's where I live with my family. I have um, my husband and two daughters who are now teenagers. I feel like the time has just flown. I don't know where it's gone. Um, I have a background as a physiotherapist, um, but after having some breastfeeding troubles with my first daughter, I decided I needed to know more about breastfeeding and so became involved with the Australian Breastfeeding Association here in Australia and became a breastfeeding counsellor and so and also became a lactation an IBCLC and so that really helped me once it came to my second daughter uh, breastfeeding was a lot different and I certainly achieved what I wanted to achieve with uh, my second daughter which was great for, for me and I got so interested in breastfeeding that I continued to do various roles within the Australian Breastfeeding Association and at some point in time decided that um, I wanted to do some research about it. And so got on the phone to the wonderful Professor Lisa Amir, who I, and said, you know, would you consider working with me as a supervisor? And I was very honoured when she said that she would. And so that was really the start of me then uh, on this journey, uh, doing some breastfeeding research. I really was interested in any sort of breastfeeding research topic because there's really a lack, a significant lack of anything, to, any research to do with breastfeeding. But one particular area that I was um, interested in was uh, insufficient milk production, in particular breast hypoplasia. And so that was the topic that we decided to focus on and now I am just, I think we've, compl uh, well, we have finished data collection, which I think will be my final uh, research project as part of the PhD. And um, I hope to uh, have some further research published on that topic to help lactation professionals from around the world um, learn more about breast hypoplasia and hopefully other budding researchers out there will uh, look at the research we've done and it will spur them on into doing even more research because we really can't get enough research. Yeah, absolutely. We were just talking offline about that. And I was I was mentioning that, you know, I know that your presentation will in, definitely inspire that. And, um, you know, that's my hope. And then, of course, for the lactation consultant, uh, professional IBCLC listening in sort of an amazing amount of resource for you know families to get the information that they need but I want to I want to wind back just a little bit because you've had quite the career physiotherapist then you get into parenthood and you know take on all the challenges that come along with that and of course you know um, became an IBCLC but before that you were already writing I mean you have a book in publication um, how, and it's called let me just read it's the newborn baby manual um, you know so you were already very passionate about parenting and you know wanting to make sure that families got that's I'm assuming right. the right information and the evidence that's right ex that's exactly what it's what it's been largely about for me is that you know um you, you don't know what you don't know and when you don't know stuff you don't know what the right questions to ask and you know having a new baby it's a very vulnerable time in your life and um, I think it's extremely important for parents to be able to access, to be fully informed with accurate, up-to-date, evidence-based information. Um, and so, yeah, that's what my, my book was about. And that's where I've really focused my energies in working with the Australian Breastfeeding Association. And uh, now with the, this, um, these research studies that I'm, that I'm involved in. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the, the research and 
Um, I know that that's what led, you know, us to you and you, you to us in terms of the topic. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit everyone up with the topic title right now. Um, and because I want everyone to take, uh, you know, advantage of getting online and getting this, um, you know, booked out here. So the topic title, the presentation title is breast hyperplasia and in insufficient milk production, what we know and what we still need to find out. And so I was very curious. Now I've had the privilege of listening to you record it now, which is just fabulous. Um, but you know, this really struck me as interesting when I was first thinking about what we don't know. Um, and there, after listening to you, and I can be honest, I can tell folks there's still a lot to know. I mean, we still don't know everything. And and this is where your passion and your enthusiasm came in because you were saying, yes, I know, we just don't know everything yet. And I want people to keep searching and keep researching in this area. Why is it that it's seemingly taking so long? What's the complexity here? What, mm -hmm. what is it? Why do we not know? You know, can we yeah. not get enough participants? Well, what is this? Yeah. yeah, I think one of the, the big factors with breast hypoplasia is that it's not a we don't know its prevalence, but we assume that it's not very prevalent. And so, right. yes, re recruiting sufficient number of participants is difficult. And the other thing is that if we just, and this is what the presentation um, early on goes through, but it talks about how the difference between breast hypoplasia and insufficient glandular tissue with breast hypoplasia being the appearance of hypoplastic breasts or undeveloped breasts and then insufficient glandular tissue being the confirmed compromise function mm -hmm. and of you know, of insufficient milk production um but it really is a diagnosis of exclusion because right. we know that women who have the appearance of hypoplastic breasts it doesn't necessarily mean that they will have insufficient milk production yes. uh, but it might be that they you know go into their breastfeeding journey journey and then uh it's discovered that they aren't making enough milk and so they work with an ibclc who works with all sorts of things and talks about their history and looks at everything and decides that well you know you have these hypoplastic appearing breasts i can't see potentially anything that's happened that would suggest a, a secondary low milk supply uh it may be that you have a, a, a primary insufficient milk uh, production problem and that could stem from uh, breast hypoplasia and hence I suggest you have insufficient glandular tissue so the fact that it's a, a diagnosis of exclusion largely also complicates it in that we can't really recruit women who have the appearance of hypoplastic breasts and and therefore they have insufficient glandular tissue it doesn't mm. doesn't exactly work that way um plus oh there's heaps of other issues for breastfeeding researchers it can be a struggle sometimes to get sufficient funding and grants for for it so that complicates things too um so we've got a ways to go renee we, i mean i think that's do. what i hear you saying we, we've we got do. we've got a ways to go and um mm -hmm. i know that you're I mean, your interest, I mean, I know your, your, what your interests are right now. Um, and I think part of this journey when it, when it's over for you, will actually probably be a little bit sad. I mean, it, it sounds like you're just so immersed, but so happy about it. I don't think I've ever heard a PhD student be this excited. Oh, so good well, for you. Great I'm, support, I'm I loving guess, it. right? I, I, <laughs> fantastic support. Um, yeah. But I love learning. Um, I love doing something that, I know it's just really the start in terms mm -hmm. of breastfeeding in this area, except I think many PhD students, they want to do something, and as an IBCLC and a physio, right. I know it's something completely different to physio, but you, know, you want to do something that makes a difference, even if it's the start. So I'd Amazing. hope that that I'm, I'm making a difference to some degree, um, and, and I just love the learning. Well, you've made a difference already um, for myself, for you know the participants who are almost ready to come in and listen to this presentation. And so it is ready to go now. So this presentation, of course, will go upline pretty soon here at beginning of our conferences right around the corner. Um, you know, thank you so much, honestly, putting this together. Um, and, you know, I, I mean, I can speak really clearly to this now, um, looking at the presentation, all the different, uh, there's lots of layers to this, um, but lots of knowledge that 
that can be shared out. So your translation of knowledge was really great today for me, Renee. So thank you for that, because I feel like I am fairly knowledgeable in this area. But you know what? That you're, you're just so much to learn. There's just so many pieces. And I think that, um, you know, what I was reminded at the end of this presentation is that you know, I, by, you know, doing this elimination, being clear, being patient, providing the evidence, families need to know this, you know, they really do. And I know that messaging is sometimes challenging and hard, you know, we've got to have that compassion. I love the fact that you've been in counseling as well, you know, speaking with families, I think it probably lends to the way that you present as well. So thank you so much. It's just been great listening to you today. It's my pleasure, Fiona. Thanks so much for the invitation. Much appreciated. Absolutely. So just a quick reminder, um, Renee Cam is going to be with us. Our presentation is titled Breast Hyperplasia and Insufficient Milk Production, What We Know and What We Still Need to Find Out. I know you're really going to enjoy it. It was absolutely fabulous. Um, Renee's presentation is part of the add-on package here at Gold this year, Parent-Centered Lactation Care Package. You can go on to the uh, Delegates dashboard and click on all the individual add-on packages. This one is ready. We'll be ready to go next uh next week well april 4th we'll have it ready for you so stay tuned um you'll be able to add it in but i think that i know for sure this is something you're going to be able to take um you know and put into practice right away well thank you again renee it's been great having you here today and we'll look forward to seeing you soon of course don't forget renee will be here with us as part of the conference uh during the forum so if you've got any questions about her presentation um and you want to connect with her or hear more about her journey i know i know she would love to share with you about that as well and we'll look forward to seeing many of you online uh, live at the event we kick off april 4th you can register right now for the keynote presentation with melissa cole that is a free and open and access. So I will look forward to seeing many of you live on that day. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye for now.